Here's a project where we make decorative plates. We're going to use any method that we have at our disposal, slab, pinch, or coil, to create a stable, balanced, freestanding piece of art. To create and keep the overall form, we're going to use either a slump mold or a hump mold. I usually suggest a slump mold in this case. We're going to focus on the elements of shape, form, and texture, and even color, to create our balanced composition with some physical depth. And as usual, we are going to artistically emphasize the surface and contours of our artwork. I'm going to begin making a plate, in this case with a slab, and I'm going to roll it flat and get it a little bit thick, but then I'm going to use these limiting sticks to make sure that I don't get it less than one-eighth of an inch thick. You can see that it's pretty thick right now, and I'm going to keep lowering it and lowering it you can see that the slab continually gets longer in the direction that I'm rolling it. So if I want it to be wider in one direction than another, I need to roll in the proper direction. For this project, I'm going to use a foam plate as a slump mold, and I want to make sure that the slab is just a little bit bigger than that before I start actually cutting it into a plate shape. I also plan to steal the texture from this piece of burlap for the back of my plate, so I'm going to put it down underneath and roll it gently across that to make sure that the texture comes out on the back. I've chosen a plastic sheet with a texture of stars for the front, so I'm going to gently roll that on top. I'm not using the limiting sticks, I'm just looking at it, and when it changes color slightly I know that it's pressed into the surface. There's my texture, and here's my plate. Once I've checked to make sure that the texture is everywhere that I want it on the plate, and the plate is about the right size, I'm going to start cutting around this foam plate to get a nice gentle circle. I'll clean that up more later on. You also might notice that I'm cutting this on top of the burlap, depending on your knife. In this case, I have a clay knife, which isn't sharp enough to go through that burlap. But depending on your knife, you might not want to do that on some other type of fabric. When I do peel that off the burlap, you can see that there's a texture on both sides. Now in this video, I'm going to focus on making one plate, but actually this plate will be one of three that are going to be part of a triptych. So I'm putting them out here so that you can sort of see them, and I'm going to gauge putting other pieces on there so that the pictures continue one into the other. Quickly, I will get these three squared away, going one into the other, and at that point I'll just focus on the center and we'll build that. I rolled out a much longer slab to go between the three and I'm just going to mark it off and cut it down. It has a texture on it so that it will look I think like grass and rolling hills going from one plate to the other. Once I do get them cut to shape and size then I need to score and slip them all down and clean up the edges. This is a relief sculpture, and by attaching other slabs to the front of this plate, I'm giving it a little bit of actual depth, and I'm trying to create the feeling of depth by also forcing the perspective. To do that, I'm going to actually put another layer of hills on top of these once I get them all stuck down. This is probably a good place to point out that you must score and slip properly to attach these pieces. Anything that you score and do not slip will not stay attached. Anything that you slip and do not score will not stay attached. Only by scoring and slipping properly can things stay attached one to the other. Also, anything well slipped will gush a little bit out the sides. You can clean that up with a brush or a sponge. Here are those three plates. The middle one hasn't been done, but you can see that I'm doing a nativity scene. This is Shepherds and the one on the right is magi with camels and there are stars in the background. For continuity of shapes and sizes I'm using my nativity cookie cutters. You can see that there are various shapes in here, camels, people, here's a donkey. It makes cutting out slab silhouettes just that much easier. So I clear a little space and I'm going to make some slabs and I'm going to cut out some shapes with cookie cutters and with other tools. You can see that I'm limiting myself to about one-eighth of an inch thick on each of these and then I'm going to use textures that I'm going to steal from these plastic sheets. So here's one slab and here comes a furry texture and then I'm going to use a cookie cutter to make a donkey. 
You may also note that the cloth underneath is a bit wet, so the donkey is going to stick a little bit and I'm going to have to peel it off. I just use a flat tool to get the parts up and then peel it up and good as new. From here on, what you're going to see is me rolling little slabs, putting textures on them, cutting out different shapes, and arranging them on the plate. Once I get to the point where I'm actually sticking them down on the plate, you will see me scoring and slipping and scoring and slipping. And did I mention scoring and slipping to make sure that everything stays where it should? Now as I've been scoring and slipping all of these pieces into place, you may have noticed the white rim of the foam plate underneath this plate. That is being used as a slump mold. While most ceramic molds are made out of plaster, this one was much less expensive and it can be purchased easily for large groups of people. If you do use disposable plates, you need to use foam ones that are not absorbent. Paper plates will not work. They will seem to work at first, and a couple hours later they will get soggy and fall apart. The term slump mold means that I put my clay form into the mold. The term hump mold means that I place it over the mold. So if I were to turn this plate over, I could place clay over the mold and it would help it retain its form. Since I am primarily intent on decorating the top of this plate, using a slump mold works best. Using the plate underneath as a hump mold would allow me to decorate the bottom of this plate and not have good access to the top. The purpose of using a mold like this in the first place is to support the clay in the shape that you wish to keep it until it is dry enough to hold that shape and form itself. If the wet clay should happen to stick to the form underneath, it will not remain stuck once it is fully dry. Now that I am almost finished, I wish to leave this in the plate underneath as a slump mold until it is almost fully dry, otherwise its own weight may cause it to crack. First it was bisque fired and then glazed with three coats and then glaze fired and this is the final product. 
So let's check our finishing criteria. First of all, it's round, very plate shaped. It indents in the center and raises at the edges. That was the shape of the slump mold. Uses at least three different textures and it has many colors as well. The slump mold itself was just under nine inches across and so it's over eight inches across before firing. Balanced composition, it fits nicely within the circle. Then the extra challenge, creating a feeling of depth using forced perspective. There are rolling hills in the background and a lot of overlapping, which is going to force that feeling of depth. So here are all three plates in a row. By paying close attention to shape and form, using the slab method, coil method, and pinch method, you can create many different surfaces on which to apply textures and colors using ceramic materials. All of these decorative surfaces used a slump mold to hold the plate shape in place while the clay dried.